Bright kids who can point out San Jose, San Francisco from the world map struggle to point out where is Siachen, where we have been fighting for the last three and a half decades. I'm sure you guys all know where Siachen is, right? It's only those kids who don't know. While in the past, our lack of knowledge of our own army would have been shameful and sad, right now it is suicidal. And let me tell you why. When I joined the army, I came from a fairly conventional background, a South Indian family, and we had this whole construct of juta, and you can't drink from someone else's uh, cup or eat some, from someone else's plate. And it was more to do with, I think, tradition rather than caste or discrimination. But you had a sense that you were different from the others. So imagine my shock that when I joined the army, we were given this one enamel mug. And that mug was your coffee mug, it was your shaving mug, it was your bathing mug, and it was your... Yeah, every other mug, you got it. And then got a little worse because it's a regulation issue. So despite scratching your name on it, they would get interchanged. And yeah, and so you could be drinking your coffee from someone else's every other mug. And that might sound weird to you, but for us it was battle inoculation because before you knew it, someone else's blood could be coursing through your veins. When a soldier is wounded, he doesn't really care whether he's getting the blood from a Christian, Muslim, Sikh, Jat, Maratha, it doesn't really matter. And that way, the Indian Armed Forces is an amazing place. For example, the first Sikh unit, the first Sikh battalion, is one of the oldest and the most decorated units of the Indian Armed Forces. This was the unit which was airlifted in October 1947 to stop the Pakistani Lashkars who were raiding Kashmir. And this was the unit which halted them at Srinagar. And thanks to this unit's gallant action, that Kashmir is on the map of India. This unit of the finest Khalsa warriors is led by a Muslim commanding officer. And he leads them not only in battle, not only in exercises, he leads them in the Gurbani every day in the Gurdwara. Or take the case of Trija. In 1965 operations, they were tasked for one of the most difficult tasks, which was the capture of a location called Dogre, and that battle has gone down in the annals of Indian history as one of the most tough battles ever fought because it was street to street, room to room, hand to hand, but Dogre was so pivotal for that operation that when their Anglo-Indian commanding officer, Lieutenant Colonel Desmond Hayes, spoke to his men and explained to them the importance of that particular objective, he told them that we have to be in Dogare by nightfall, dead or alive. And after giving them the briefing, he asked his Jat troops in his clipped Haryanvi, Susare, aaj raat ko teen Jat kaha hogi? And the troops shouted back, Dogare, Dogare. He wanted to make sure that the troops understood that the mission was larger than the leader. And then he asked them, Oh Susare, agar Shio sahab ne goli laggi, so phir kya karoge? And without batting an eyelid, the senior Jeshua shouted back, Saar ji, agar Sio ne goli lagi, to kande pe taan ke le jayenge, lekin rukenge dogre jake. And that night, in that operation, three jar, consisting of jar troops under an Anglo-Indian commanding officer, took back dogre not once, but twice, winning three Mahavir Chakra, four Veer Chakras and seven Sena medals in one single operation. Our soldiers don't fight. They don't care about the name on their chest, which is their own name. They care about the name on their shoulder, which is their Paltan's name. Once they join the unit, if they join a Gurkha unit, they become a Gurkha. If they join a Maratha unit, they become a Maratha. They become a band of brothers. They really don't care about caste, creed, gotras, religions and all of that stuff. And I think, my sense is it's not just the army that feels that way. Some of you may remember in 1992, in Parvanu, in the timber trail, there was this cable car which broke and it was dangling by a cable and there were many souls who were trapped inside it and they were going to plunge to certain death. There's a beautiful story of a Hindu woman who was trapped inside and she was praying to her gods to save her. And before a little while, they heard the thud of a chopper coming, the thud, thud, thud of a hepter coming in, and that hepter was being flown by squadron leader Pali Major, who went on to become the air chief of the Indian Air Force. And from that hepter, 
the para commando first para commando unit a legendary para commando captain ivan krasto slithered down and entered into the cable car and saved the lives of the people inside now here's something really funny this woman was reaching out to her hindu guards but it was a christian para commando who came down flown by a parsi major by a parsi pilot and we have seen this across the board when we are going for rescue into national natural calamities or or floods or even 2611 neither the hostages neither the people who have been rescued nor the people who are rescuing really care about the religion the caste the creed the composition of the troops who are coming to save them i don't know how many of you know this that in our armed forces we don't have any mandir masjid gurdwara we have what is called a sarva dharm sthal in which all the religions are prayed together and a mall we will do a pandit's job pandit will stand in for a granthi somehow the gods don't seem to care either but when this soldier comes back home he gets a different world he gets a completely different world there is leaders his political leaders his religious leaders his uh, his friends his relatives tell him a different story they tell him that that caste is stealing away jobs this caste is taking away reservations that person is different from you because he eats a different kind of meat they tell him that you have to be our caste first and an indian later ladies and gentlemen soldiers don't fight with weapons they fight on a moral high ground soldiers don't go into war because they hate the enemy in the front they go to war because they love their countrymen in the back <laughs> leaders across spectrums have their own agendas some people want to win elections some people want to get more power and some people genuinely want to do good for their own communities but we as citizens have to realize one thing that even as i am speaking to you right now standing over here from kanyakumari to kargil there are soldiers who are deployed in every kind of situation right now as i speak to you there is a captain out there in siachen glacier who is already battling three fronts he has got a front of a very determined enemy he has got a front of a very horrible weather which claims lives almost on a daily basis and he is battling the front of the nonsense going on in delhi with jantar mantar with veterans fighting the government government fighting the veterans i beg of you let's not open a fourth front for him let's not forget that the strength of this country which is symbolized by your armed forces is the unity of its diversity let's not forget that jai hind jai hind thank you thank you thank you